Welcome to the Main Street Garden at Colby Soil College. I am Leon Milan and today we are going to save some seeds. So today what we're going to do, we're going to uh, save some tomato seeds. I'll show us how to do that. And we'll also do some cucumbers and show us how to do that. Uh, so let's start with the tomato. We're going to walk into the tomatoes and have a look at what a tomato flower looks like. And then we're going to show you how to get the seeds out of a tomato. So this is a little tomato flower. I'm not going to get into botanical terms, but it's called a complete flower. It has all everything it needs for pollination. It has uh, the male parts that produce the, the pollen. It has the female part with the ovary. And so actually a tomato, tomato flower doesn't need pollination. It is pretty much self pollinated. And what I do every year is I make sure that early in the season, I indicate a really nice tomato. So this is called a Morgus Lifter. So I tagged it and we said, don't harvest that. And that is a tomato that we're gonna then use to make seed. The reason I do that early in the season, because I now selected for the genes, that is an early ripening tomato. I did make the mistake one year, avoiding right till the end of the season save lots of seeds and the next year I couldn't understand why all my tomatoes are not ripening until right at the end of the season. So it's a good idea to save whatever you want to save at the time that you want that to grow. So that's an early season. I save that for an early season tomato. So this is a tomato that we, that we labeled earlier in the season. It actually got so ripe that it fell off the vine. It's beautiful. It's really nice and ripe. So what I want to do for saving a seed, I want to have uh, a tomato fruit that's really ripe and also that one that doesn't have any disease on it. So this is a pretty healthy tomato. And the way I do that is pretty simple. And I'm just going to cut across, right? This is the top of the tomato. I'm just going to cut across here. And there. Now comes the fun part that I have to try and do without getting tomato seeds all over myself, which is why I have it set up uh, with a little funnel. And I'm just going to take this tomato and I'm going to give it a nice squeeze. And you'll see all my little seeds are popping right into my jar. We could open it up, but you'll see that I got most of the seeds are out. I'm going to cover it with a little bit of um, cover to get to make sure the fruit flies don't in, get in here. I'm going to stick a label on here because I want to know what it was. So we're going to stick a label with a date and also the fact that this was uh, Rose de Burn. And I'm just going to stick that on a shelf in the kitchen. And I'm, going to, uh, and I'm going to leave it for about three or four days. It is going to get gross, uh, but that's our next step. So let me show you what it will look like after three or four days. And I have some here that's been around for three or four days. So here's another tomato. This was a mortgage lifter. I did that on the 15th. It does not smell good. Take my word. Take a strainer. And I'll pop that all into a strainer. You just run this under a tap with the outside, under a hose. So now I have all my little seeds. And what that fermentation process did is here is a little seed that we just got from the tomato. Just got a little slimy little sack around that. And what I did with the fermentation process, the fermentation process got rid of that. Get a piece of paper and I literally just put my little seeds on here. And this goes on a shelf in my kitchen, not in direct sunlight. They're going to get nice and dry and eventually I'm going to take them off a piece of paper and put them in a little container. To keep them cool, uh, keep them dark and keep them dry. It's as simple as that. So I now have lots of seeds for my next year's crop. 